Hello and welcome. In this video, we will be looking at chapter 8, which discusses wage determination. So we're going to be looking at labor, wages and earnings. We're going to be looking at the demand and supply for labor. We're going to be looking at the different labor markets as well as wage differentials. So wages refers to the remuneration for labor. Remember, labor is a factor of production. The wage rate refers to the price paid per unit of labor service and your labor earnings is the number of hours worked multiplied by your wage rate. Then you have two types of wages. You have a nominal wage and you have a real wage. Your nominal wage is the actual amount of money that you earn. Okay, so this is the amount of money that you earn per day, per week or per month. Then you have real wages. This is what you can purchase with your nominal wage. Okay, so it refers to the purchasing power of your nominal wage. Now, your real wage depends on your nominal wage as well as the prices of your goods and services that you purchase. So, if your nominal wage increases, your real wage will increase. And if the prices of the goods and services that you purchase increases, your real wage is going to decrease because you can purchase less with the amount of money that you have and your purchasing power then decreases. Then we look at the demand and supply of labor. So your demand for labor refers to your employers and the supply of labor refers to your employees. So demand for labor, when your demand for labor increases, your price or your wage will decrease. Now this has to do with the shift of your curves. So if this is your original demand with W1 and L1 as your original wage and labor quantity, if demand increases, your demand curve is going to shift up to D1. So your wage is going to increase as well as the quantity of your labor demanded. Okay, so if demand increases, your wage will increase. Then we look at supply. So if supply increases, your wage is going to decrease. Again, this has to do with the shift of your curve. So if this is your original supply and 40 is your original wage and 5.5 .5 is your original labor quantity and you have an increase in your supply, so your supply curve shifts downward, which indicates an increase in your supply. So that will be S1, increase in your supply. So you have a decrease in your wage and an increase in your quantity of labor supply. Then we look at the role of productivity in labor. So how does productivity affect labor? The more productive your labor, the higher the demand for that labor. This is because you will be making more um, revenue or profit for your um, employer. So you have a fixed supply curve and your demand curve will shift upward, indicating an increase in demand. And you will have an increase in wages because demand increases as well as an increase in your equilibrium quantity. If nominal wages increase, your real wage also increases. Then we're going to look at the different types of labor markets. So we will start off with a purely competitive labor market. Here you have many firms competing with each other to hire a specific type of labor. So you have many firms hiring a specific type of labor. Each of the many qualified workers have identical skills that supply that type of labor. And they are wage takers. So both firms and individuals are wage takers. Now, your labor market as a whole has a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve. Where they intersect, meaning equilibrium, that will determine your wage rate as well as the quantity. Okay, and a single firm is a wage taker, so they will use this equilibrium wage that you will that the labor market determines. Okay, and the supply is um, perfectly elastic because they are wage takers and they cannot change your wage rate. Okay, and they have a downward sloping demand curve. Then we look at the individual firm's demand for labor. So we're still busy with a purely competitive labor market. Now you have marginal revenue product and marginal resource cost. 
So for a purely competitive labor market and an individual firm in this labor market, your MRP represents demand and MRC represents your supply. Okay, so your marginal revenue product is the additional revenue that an additional employee can generate and your marginal resource cost is the cost of hiring an additional employee. Okay, now a firm, an individual firm, will uh, employ labor or hire labor up until the point where MRC equals MRP. It will be this point here. Now this is because after this point, your marginal resource cost is going to be higher than your marginal revenue product. So your costs are more than your product, which means you will stop hiring. So where MRC equals MRP, that is where you're going to um, optimize profit. Okay, then MRC equals your wage rate, which is constant. Then you have your monopsony model. This is a market in which a single employer of labor has substantial buying power. So your monopsony is like a monopoly in your labor market. You have a single buyer of a particular labor type and you have, um, rel they are relatively immobile either geographically or because workers have to acquire new skills. They are wage makers, so the wage rate varies directly with the number of workers that it employs. Okay, now this is the graph, so the curves that you'll be using for a monopsony model. You have your MRC and you have MRP. So this is MRC. It can be um, MC and uh, Marginal revenue, marginal cost, so MC and MR, but you write it as MRC and MRP because it is a labor market. So when you're determining the wage rate for this market, you follow these three steps. So you first look for where MRC equals MRP, which will be A, okay? Then you will come down to your supply curve. Now a monopsony model has a supply curve of their own, which is upward sloping. Individual supply equals your total supply because you have a single firm or a single employer. Okay, it is upward sloping because employers must pay higher wages to attract workers away from other jobs. Okay, so your first step is you look for where MRC equals MRP. You come down to your supply curve, which is this point M, and that is the wage rate and the quantity of labor that the monopsony will. Um, employ and pay. So monopsony hires smaller amounts of labor and they pay lower wage rates. C represents your equilibrium wage rates and your equilibrium labor quantity. So they, they charge a lower um, wage rate and they hire a smaller amount of labor. Then you have a bilateral monopoly model. So this is a combination of a union and a monopsony. Okay. So there's a single seller and a single buyer. Now you have a union which represents a monopolistic seller of labor and they control the supply and they influence the wage rate. Then you have a buyer which is your monopsonistic buyer and they affect wages by changing employment. An example is your steel and automobile industries. Then you have an indeterminate outcome of bilateral monopoly. So what this means is that they have, they don't have a set wage, okay? This is because a monopsony will seek below average equilibrium wage rate. We so, just saw that they charge a lower wage rate than the equilibrium wage rate. And a union will press for above average equilibrium wage rates, okay? Because unions want workers to have higher wages. Now, the party with the greater bargaining power and more effective bargaining strategy will probably get a wage closer to the one that it seeks or sets. So when you're drawing the graph for this um, market, labor market, what you do is you draw your three curves. So you draw your MRC. Okay, you draw your supply curve. And you draw your MRP. Okay. Then you first find your equilibrium. So MRP is also equal to demand. 
So where demand equals supplies, supply, that will be your equilibrium, wage and quantity. Okay. Then you look for where the monopsony would um, charge their wage rate and hire your labor. So a monopsony hires or charges a wage rate below your equilibrium wage rate. So you look for where MRC equals MRP, which will be this point here, and you come down to your supply curve, and that is the wage and quantity that they will charge. Then you look for where your union would want um, the wages. So they will want for an above average equilibrium wage rate. Okay, so this will be this one here. Because that is above um, equilibrium. So this is why we say that there is indeterminate outcome of a bilateral monopoly. Because they can charge anywhere in between these wages. Okay, so the party with the greater bargaining power and more effective bargaining strategy will get a wage closer to the one that it seeks and it will lie between these wage rates. Okay, then we look at wage differentials. So this is the additional amount of income that a worker must be given in order to motivate them to accept a given undesirable job relative to other jobs that workers could perform. Now, what explains wage differentials? So why do some people or occupations earn more than others? This is because of the forces of demand and supply. Now, we have four different scenarios or cases. You have two on your supply side and two on your demand side. So for your supply side, your supply curve will remain the same and you will have different demand curves. And for your demand side, you have your demand curve remaining the same and you have different supply curves. So I'm going to start off with your supply side. So you have two different cases. So your supply remains fixed, okay? And you have two different demand curve um, circumstances or scenarios. The first one is where you have a strong demand. So here your demand will lie higher on your supply curve, meaning you have a higher wage rate as well as a higher quantity of labor okay and then your second one is where you have a low demand so here your demand curve is sitting lower on your supply curve so your wage rate as well as the quantity of labor is lower compared to the first scenario then you have your supply sorry your demand side um, scenarios here your demand curve is fixed Okay, so your demand curve remains the same. And your supply curve will um, change. So for your first scenario, you have a labor supply which is highly restricted. So this means you have a lower supply of um, labor. This means that your supply curve is sitting higher up. And you have a higher wage rate but a lower supply of labor so your quantity is going to be lower but your wage rate is going to be higher so for this case here you usually have labor which is rare so you have skills which are rare okay that is why your wage rate is higher then you have a labor supply which is highly abundant and here your supply curve is going to sit lower on your demand which means you have a lower wage rate as well as a higher quantity of labor okay so those are your four different cases okay then we look at why demand and supply conditions differ in various labor markets so there are three reasons you have marginal revenue productivity which is the strength of your demand curve which depends on how much different occupations contribute to their employers revenue so the more you contribute to your employer's revenue, it means you are more productive. And the more productive the labor, the higher the demand for that labor. And when demand is high, you have a higher wage. Okay. Then you have non-competing groups. 
Okay, so these are collections of workers in the economy who do not compete with each other for employment because the skills and training of the workers in one group are substantially different from those of workers in other groups. So these um, workers differ based on the, their ability as well as their education and training. Then you have compensating differences. So these are differences in wage rates or wages which are received by workers in different jobs to compensate for non-monetary differences in their jobs. So non-monetary differences refers to things like how risky the job is or how flexible the hours of the jobs are. Okay, then you have market imperfections. So these are things like lack of job information, geographic immobility, so here workers may not want to move to another area due to friends or family or the cost of moving or even leaving their comfort zone. Then you have unions and government as well as discrimination. Okay, so this is the reasons why demand and supply conditions differ in your various markets. So this is it for this video. I hope you understood how to draw the different um, curves and thank you.